Hey guys, so what's Bambi TV? Guys, let me react to it. Jessica. Guys, let me be reacting to where did the Mecca's black stone come from? Explanation from Jewish man. Guys, let's get straight into this. I believe that the Bible is a GPS. Uh, I believe that the Bible uh, took place, a lot of it took place in Arabia. Actually, in most churches, Christians say to me, we know that Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai, is not in the Sinai Peninsula, but rather in northwest Saudi Arabia. It's called Jebel al uh, I am the first Jew in the Jewish world who's coming to the rabbis and saying, the Torah is a GPS. Uh, Jethro, the high priest of Midian, I believe was the high priest of the Kaaba, the black stone, which is today in Mecca. There was no Mecca, it was just a black stone in those days. Uh, Moses was the son-in-law of Jethro. Moses was the understudy of Jethro for 40 years. And when Moses went to take the children of Israel out of slavery, he gave them the phylacteries, which they are to put on their forehead and on their left arm, as a sign from God that we are leaving the pyramid system of slavery in Egypt and we're going to the cube system of freedom in Arabia. And it must be remembered that there was no Judaism in those days, there was no Christianity, there was no Islam. All people, including the Israelite slaves, were pagans. And of course, the golden calf, basically the children of Israel reverted to the gods that they had known in Egypt yes. when Moses delayed coming back. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. And when God says in Deuteronomy 11, that the borders of Israel will include the desert to the south. That desert is Arabia. And talk about the linkage between the, the Jews who wear phylacteries and this pilgrimage to Mecca. By the way, if Christians have ever come to Israel, so I'm talking now to the people who've been to Israel, they've yes. seen it on the flight. Yes. Because when, when, <clears throat> when, when people are still snoozing and the sun comes up as the plane is approaching Israel, you see the Orthodox Jewish men go to the back of the plane and they pray, and they put on the phylacteries. And this is a tradition that goes back 3,500 years. Um, by the way, it, very important, and I learned this in the Jewish Theological Seminary, we studied the New Testament. Matthew 23, verse 5. Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees, and he says, for all their, their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and they enlarge the hems of their garments, or the tzitzit on their prayer shawls. And it's, it's interesting, indeed, that today there are three types of phylactery. You have the size A, the size B, and the size C. And so okay. what Jesus was saying was, he wasn't saying don't put on the phylacteries, which I'm sure Jesus did. Uh, what he was saying was that if you have the $200 phylactery, and you have the $400 phylactery, and you have the $600 phylactery, which is humongous, don't spend your money on $600 phylactery. Spend it on the $200 and give the $400 to charity to feed the poor. So, but it's something, it's in Matthew 23, verse 5. So we know that Jewish men in those days wore this. We know that in the Greek Orthodox Christian tradition, there are priests who put on phylacteries. It's a slightly different Greek phylactery, but it all commemorates exactly the same thing. So the phylacteries have a very important meaning for Christians as well. So my question, and I'll ask it for everybody who's watching, why in the world would you put on, uh, strap a little wooden box with the scriptures from Deuteronomy on the inside and attach that to your left arm and to your forehead. Why would, why would you do that and why would it be cube-shaped? Cube Perfectly cube-shaped. And so the contention in my book is that when Moses came to Pharaoh, and fa remember Pharaoh was God. Pharaoh was God in Egypt to the Egyptian people. He created the Nile and he created this and he created that. Who's Moses? Moses is a guy who stutters. It's very hard to talk. And God says, give the people a sign. And the phylacteries were the sign. He gave Pharaoh the signs. You remember his rod became a, uh, a crocodile or serpent, ate the other crocodiles. Right. Or mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the leprosy in the chest. These are all signs. That, and then later the ten plagues. Um, and Moses gave signs to the elders of Israel. And Moses gave signs to the people. You're talking about primitive pagan people who are shepherds. And they're saying to Moses, well, why should we listen to you? You know, and so, God, so this uh, phylactery has four pouches, four parchments. Uh, the first two are Exodus 13. Then you have Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11.
Exodus 13, we are still in Egypt. We are still in slavery. We're about to flee. But Exodus 13 talks about the, you know, sign on thy arm and frontlets between thine eyes. And, I, you know, I know young people won't know the word that I'm going to say now, but there's a word that older people like you and I remember, which is, you know, you know gyroscope. A gyroscope takes us directly in the direction we have to go. And Moses is leading the children of Israel out of the pyramid triangular system to the cubic square system of freedom in the desert. And again, uh, Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may circle me in the desert. The other five times, let my people go so that they may serve the Lord in the desert. But the first one is they should go around the circles. Now, Hajj is a pilgrim to Mecca. Hag is the Egyptian pronunciation. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles or going around in circles. Or going around in circles or going around in circles. Guys, we have come to the end of this. What do you think about this? <laughs> okay, this is the first time I'm hearing about the strap and stuff they have to I swear. And then put here. This is the first time Me I'm hearing too. about it. So I may not have much to say, but them going around, like they are relating everything to the Bible. It's like they're mm -hmm. picking wet and putting wet and <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like this is new to me. Like I, I think I have never heard of this. But his explanation actually made sense. Yeah, it did. It did. Because but, everything he was giving is like there's an evidence. So I'm yes. thinking something about them. With everything they're saying, it's that they're giving evidence to everything they are saying. Do you understand? So you can't say, oh, this particular thing, this yeah. particular saying is wrong. So guys, we won't, I can't talk much on it because it's something we don't have an idea about. But based on the evidence he said, I think what he was saying is true. Based on the evidence, but it's something I have to go and do research on because... Mm. And you guys can also, you know, yes, us on this. in the comment section, please. I beg, I beg of you. I feel this is also still new to a lot of you out there, so... Please let's find a solution together. I'll we'll communicate in the conversation. Guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.